Hey everyone, thanks for joining. This was not the video I intended to be making after the games, to say the very least. I think we are probably all more than a little shell-shocked after this weekend's events at the CrossFit Games and not really sure where to start. I think what, the way I want to start this is by asking you guys for a little grace and the fact that I'm not going to heavily edit it and I'm just speaking from the heart and so I'm positive knowing me, I will not say all the right things. I do want to start by extending my deepest sympathies to the family of Lazar. I can't even begin to imagine the depth of their grief and what they're going through currently. And it is heartbreaking, both at an individual level and for the community at large. I'm going to drop in the show notes a link to the GoFundMe. So if anyone would like to donate money, you can do that there. And I'm also going to put in the show notes a link to a grief center for anyone that maybe is feeling lost over what happened this weekend. It could be a resource to you if you feel you need it. Additionally, any money earned from this channel for the month of August, I'm going to donate to the GoFundMe and I'm going to match those proceeds as well. I know a lot of you are probably here watching this video in hopes of just hearing me rage about the events of the weekend. And I'm going to be honest, I want to do that but really bad. I think what happened over this weekend was 100% preventable. And I, I get it that injury and risk are always a factor in sport. There's not a lot you can do about that, but the athlete should be assured that the organization has done everything in their power to protect them. There was obviously a massive and epic failure at that level this weekend. And as much as I could sit here and rail on it and break down the series of events that I believe caused it, I don't think that's productive. We still don't have all the facts. Investigations are not complete. We just don't simply know everything that happened. I think what will be productive, however, is, is us as a community immediately starting the discussion around what we expect of CrossFit to start changing to build the trust back. One of my biggest takeaways from the weekend was this feeling of a loss of innocence within the community. And just that breach of trust was so overwhelming that it's almost hard to put into words. And CrossFit has to fix that quickly for a number of reasons. And we'll get into all of that. I think they're wanting to. I think they have started the right way by putting an investigation underway with a third party independent review. I want to talk about that a little, because I think it's important both to understand the purpose and the why behind it. The purpose of a third party review is to eliminate bias in an investigation. It gives you an impartial and objective opinion to the facts of whatever happened. It's a good sign that they did it. I wasn't shocked. It's a typical corporate move, probably board driven, if I had to guess. And, and that's okay. That's not a shot at the board. I just think that it's likely board driven to help them understand exactly what happened without the bias of an employee opinion. Like they don't want the employee opinion here for a number of reasons. The biggest one being they need to determine what next steps are. And often those steps will include termination for cause. We're not going to speculate on who should and shouldn't be fired. But I do think that part of that investigation will uncover that. I also think as a community, we need to level set expectations of what's going to come from it. Don came forward and announced that they were doing this and said that they will share the findings and be as transparent as possible in doing so. But I think we need to recognize that transparency isn't always what we want it to be. Meaning some of those findings are going to either implicate or impact employees that currently work for CrossFit, and they're not going to be able to share those with us at least immediately because they're going to need to protect workplace privacy and that individual employee's privacy. Now, don't feel like that's a cover-up. It isn't because this third-party review will absolutely be discoverable in court. Legal will easily get their hands on it and bring people to account. It just means that we as a community may not hear all of it as quickly as we like to. And I think we have to admit as a community, we tend to rush to want things. So we're going to have to wait to get the full details. But I do think it's important that they did it. And I appreciate the fact that they put it together. I think, however, it does highlight 
an organization that has struggled to be transparent for some time and the need for certain things to happen that we need to start demanding happen quickly, both to ensure safety of athletes and to ensure that the trust within the community is not further broken. I think one of those things that was really evident early on was the way the athletes were treated by the organization itself. And it just highlighted to me that the athletes need a stronger athletes union that CrossFit takes seriously. They currently have one called the PFAA that does a really nice job. And I think to their credit, CrossFit has at, at least tried to have the appearance of working, of having a working relationship with the athletes association. But from the outside looking in, it feels more like an advisory relationship. And what I mean by that is, a true athletes union has real power to push back on the organization when it's needed and to represent the athletes. In its current state, the PFAA will make recommendations to CrossFit and then CrossFit can decide to do something with it or completely disregard it. And there's no ramifications if they completely disregard it. Whereas with the strong athlete union, in a worst case scenario, athletes could walk off. One of the storylines that came out of the weekend was this athlete discontent, as you would expect when they were put in the ridiculous position of having to make a decision of whether to continue to compete or not. And that's a really almost impossible task to ask of an athlete, and they should never be put in that position. What should have happened is it should have been a conversation between the event organizers and representatives from the PFAA and with a strong athletes union, that's what would happen. But uh, up until this point, CrossFit hasn't recognized the strength of that organization. And, and I think that's where we landed here. I would think of it like this. If I were your employer and I came to you and said, Hey, we have this big project going on. Here's what I think we should do. What do you think? How many employees are going to tell their employer, Hey, I think you're full of it. I don't want to go that route. In most cases, they will just simply acquiesce and do whatever their boss said because they want to keep their job and they don't want to ruffle feathers. And it's really not that different at the athlete level to go to the athletes and say, we're going to continue competition. What are some things you think we should do? Is an impossible task to ask of an athlete who just lost a friend, to ask of an athlete who has trained relentlessly for years to make it to their largest championship event and then to have to make a decision as to what's next is just it's almost an impossible ask of them and so I, I think that CrossFit needs to really be thinking about how can they have a collaborative approach that makes sense for the athletes along those same lines if the PFA becomes successful then they can demand stricter safety protocols and would allow them to reinforce the need to invest resources in creating an independent safety team that could, as an example, veto programming or set minimum safety standards for events. You can't have the event organizers in charge of safety. It's not their area of expertise. And often the spectacle of the event gets in the way of it. You need someone on the outside that can look at it from a, again, without bias, and point something out that is not safe and make changes to it. And it has to be someone who doesn't report to the games team. Their sole concern needs to be safety. Along the same lines, there should be zero volunteers on this team unless maybe they're an MD or in a role that doesn't call upon actually protecting someone like an intern. You want the best of the best to be part of that, which means spending money. And that's where having a successful and powerful athletes union will force the organization to spend money in order to do this and to protect the athletes. All of this wrapped up really, to me, just highlights the biggest change that needs to come from CrossFit and it needs to start immediately, which is fixing the culture. You can see in those previous points that CrossFit has this long ingrained culture of not listening and collaborating well with others. And that's a huge problem. They have this mindset that they know better without recognizing that there are other experts in the field that would help them in immense ways. It basically just comes down to hubris. I've mentioned it before, 
but you've seen it in recent examples where you have Dave and Don on podcasts reacting to content they've seen within the community from people like Hiller or myself and commenting on it without actually watching it in full to gain an understanding of what we're trying to tell them. And all that highlights to me is an organization that continues to lead and operate with emotional responses instead of a disciplined response that a business requires. It's this lack of discipline that feels like it's just reverberating through the organization. And I suspect when this third party review is over, it's going to paint a picture of an organization that doesn't have enough checks and balances to ensure that decisions are well placed. They don't have enough checks and balances to make sure that employees are held accountable. And they certainly don't have enough checks and balances to provide a safe competition environment for athletes. I had Don on our podcast, Kettlebells and Cocktails, I think it was back in February. And we had this deep discussion around culture. And in that conversation, Don said to me that his key priority was bringing a servant mindset to leadership. Now, servant leadership is not a new concept in corporate business. It basically is a concept that prioritizes the needs of others over the needs of one, one's own with the goal of serving those being led. I believe after watching what happened this weekend from top to bottom, it's really easy for me to see that priority is not taking hold at most levels within the organization. And I hope collectively as a team, they're able to see why it's so important. Servant leadership requires humility and putting the needs of others above your own interests. And I think if there's ever a moment that required those two traits, humility and putting your needs aside, this is that moment. Before I sign off here, I wanted to encourage the community on a few things as we continue to work through this. I think we're going to hear over the next coming days, weeks, and months, a lot of opinions, a lot of loud voices around this. And you would expect there should be. This is a traumatic event that should have never happened. And so there's going to be a lot of people screaming for change. Change is not only necessary right now, but it should be required at this point. And whenever you have radical change in an organization or a community like ours, you're going to have significant disagreements. Here's my encouragement. We all want the same thing. We want a community that we can be proud of, led by people we trust. So as we're working through this, as we're talking to each other, as we're trying to identify the areas that need change, lead with kindness, lead with empathy, listen more than you speak, and it'll all work out.